Good evening and welcome to Wealth Creation Through Industrialization. I am Hadiza Olao Shebiko. Tonight's program will focus on Federal Government's Nigeria Industrial Revolution Plan, NIRP, which is aimed at increasing the contribution of the manufacturing sector to the GDP of the country from the present 4% to more than 10% over the next five years. Some industrialists interviewed gave an insight on how the NIRP plan will impact positively on some of its vital components that includes the automotive policy and the sugar master plan. We hope you enjoy it. The Nigerian Industrial Revolution Plan, NIRP, and the National Enterprise Development Program, NEDEP, which was launched recently in Abuja by the Federal Government of Nigeria through the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, has been generating a lot of confidence among industrialists through its various elements, which were designed, amongst other things, to ease the cost of doing business in the country. The elements in NRP, which is a Nigerian Industrial Revolution Plan, there are five major elements. One is that it focuses on where Nigeria has competitive and comparative advantage. Where Nigeria can be number one in Africa and over 10 be a top five, a top 10 player in the world. Secondly, it is holistic. First is strategic, second is holistic in the sense that it looks across the value chain. So when I'm talking about developing the auto sector, for example, it's not just looking, using tariff as we have done in the past. It's making sure that we have the skills, the industrial skills to develop it. It's making sure that the, the steel, the metal sector of the economy, there's a strong policy to support that because I need the steel for car assembly. It's making sure that petrochemicals and plastic work because I need that to support auto industry. It's making sure that the rubber to tire value chain works. So we look, we look across the value chain. The minister spoke on the auto policy, which has attracted a lot of interest from both domestic and foreign investors in the auto industry. Now, if you look at the auto policy, which was only announced on the 2nd of October, now on the 9th of October, within a week, Nissan announced that it was coming to Nigeria to partner and set up Nissan plants in the country. And only recently at the Davos, the president of Nissan actually met with the president and reassured him that they won't target, and in fact the first Nissan cars will be produced in the country in April. Then we have all the likes, the, 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 the dream of any country setting up this policy, the dream, all the OEMs looking at the country. Now we have commitments now, I think Hyundai of South Korea is signing in, and of course I, I think have shipped their SKDs. We have the like Volkswagen looking at all their products in the country. We have the likes of uh, Toyota looking at the policy, they will come up with a plan by the end of March. We have the likes of uh, 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 Honda carrying out their due diligence. We have the likes of Tata. If you look at Tata, for example, Tata is the most celebrated auto players in Europe today. In UK, for example, they employ 85,000 people in their auto business. They're the most celebrated people invest in the United Kingdom. They are coming here. I met with them about three, four weeks ago. The minister was unanimously supported by industrialists on the impact of NIRP plan as regards the auto industry sector. It's one of the best things that, have, that has ever happened to Nigeria. And I'll tell you why I say so. It has a lot of advantages to Nigeria as a, com as a, as a, as a nation. It puts us on a different level entirely compared to so many other countries. I mean, when you talk about uh, industrialized countries, no, one thing I'll always tell you is that no nation can boast of GDP rising without industrialization. So with the new automotive policy, it's one of the most vibrant sectors in the manufacturing industry that has a multiplier ripple effect. Number one, when it comes to job employment, and I can assure you that once the jobs are created, once the automotive policy is in place, 
not only are vehicles going to be manufactured, look at the multiplier effect. Every single part of the vehicle, you will now start having manufacturing companies that are going to be producing brake pads, that are going to be producing, producing um, clutch, uh, windscreens, and the different parts of the vehicle. I think the vehicle has close to about, is it about uh, 2,500 different parts or more than that. And you can now imagine having different manufacturing companies producing the different parts of a motor vehicle. And then you can now imagine the amount of people that are going to be working in these different companies, <laughs> different manufacturing setups, producing all these different parts. So it has a multiplier effect. Well, the auto policy is um, a lifeline to our industry. It's enabled, it's, an, it's bringing about another enabling environment, which, which ensures that um, any assembly operation that is starting now can compete. Um, so it's something that we have, we have all clamored for. But additionally, it's the real value of this policy to us as Nigerians is the fact that it's going to enable us once again to develop a manufacturing base. So for us, the essence of this policy is one that is going to give rise to the onset of an industrial base. And when that industrial base develops, it's not just about auto vehicles. The same skills you use to develop auto company, we are going to now use to develop other domestic appliances. We can now start to make our own cabinets, our own fridges, our own whatever. Because the same skills of, of machining tools, of bending metal, of, of dealing with, 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 I mean, with these local components, you can use to, to apply to other, other appliances in, 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 in the home and in, and in the office. So the auto policy really is a precursor to the development of an, of an industrial base, which can en enable us to um, stop importing virtually everything that we use. Uh, a lot of things. Uh, importantly, it allows to put a vast industrial infrastructure back to use. Uh, we've made enormous investments, as uh, you will see once you go around the facility. The amount of uh, infrastructure we have put down to be able to promote uh, local assembly of uh, automobiles. So this policy will enable us to put this huge infrastructure and investments to use. It will also enable us to retain and absorb back some of our skill and train manpower that we had to lay off because of very low activity. So it's an opportunity for us to bring them back into full employment. It will also enable us to continuously develop and train Nigerians into automobile assembly uh, technology uh, in terms of skills, in terms of uh, expertise and specialization. Importantly, it will also mean that uh, we'll be back in business in a very significant manner. Our dealership network will be revived. Uh, our workshops that are spread across the whole country, the length and breadth of Nigeria, will come back to activity and will come back to business, offering employment to people and opportunities to the dealership. It will also mean that uh, a lot of our service providers locally will be back to business. So it's a huge uh, change, it's a huge development for us. We're very happy with it and uh, we pray and we continuously uh, will uh, promote and support the government to ensure full-scale implementation of this policy. Uh, the new policy is a first step and uh, we into auto industry. We find out that this is the only way auto industry will succeed in, in Nigeria and Africa. The policy will help auto industry to grow in Nigeria. Because of this policy, many more companies will come to establish uh, more motor industry in Nigeria. When there is more industry, Nigerians will work there. Many Nigerians will work there. The issues of non-employment, we, we, it will help. With this policy, many cars will spring out because uh, Nigeria, in fact, we started, by, we started manufacturing bus 
after we started pickup, after we we start uh, SUVs. On a play, our first car is coming out. It is this policy that it gives us encouragement to expand more, which I believe all Nigeria will benefit. We are going to make car in Nigeria to be cheap like other countries. Our first car is coming on April. When it comes, check the quality and check the price. You will see the difference. Find out that people will go out of Tokumbo. Anybody hoping to buy a second-hand car will stop because of the, uh, the new ones we are, we, are, um, we are going to bring in the market. Many companies are ready to come to Nigeria. Many companies want to partner with me to develop uh, motor manufacturing. NIRP cuts across all sectors of the economy. The sugar industry is also part of the success story of the Nigeria Industrial Revolution Plan. We believe the government has developed an excellent master plan. We are determined to drive this uh, uh, policy. Dangote uh, is investing heavily into this because this will be one of the biggest uh, projects that any government can actually engage and get successful. You know, what the Sugar Master Plan is saying is instead of importing raw sugar to refine in Nigeria, we should actually develop sugar locally. And we have gone through six different states, like I have mentioned to you, and acquired a total of not less than 180,000 hectares of land to develop that. Now, this doesn't happen overnight. So just like the federal government developed a Sugar Master Plan for over a period of time, the Dangote also developed Dangote Sugar Master Plan in order for us in 10 years to be able to produce 1.5 million metric tons of white sugar, which should be self-sufficient for Nigeria at the moment. I think we have been extremely successful so far, in fact, beyond our own expectations so far. As a result of the Sugar Master Plan, the idea was that over a 10-year period, we'll generate about 117,000 jobs, 411 uh, um, megawatts of power, have capacity of about 1.7 million uh, in terms of sugar production, uh, foreign exchange savings. But in fact, since the implementation, we've seen investment, pipeline investment come into the sector of about $3 billion, led by local investors. Secondly, in fact, because of the policy, one of the investors, for example, in their sugar master plan, they're going to set up sugarcane plantation in six states in the northern part of Nigeria they will employ 180,000 people in four years, compared to the plan that was 117 in 10 years. This is 180,000 jobs in four years. Now, we have other investors that have come to the sector, and by next week, I'll be visiting the plantations to start with. The minister also highlighted successes recorded in the cement industry, which is one of the planks of the Industrial Revolution Plan. We have been extremely, extremely, and I stress the word extremely, successful in the cement sector, based on government policy. I am proud to say that a country that actually produced 2 million metric tons in cement in uh, 2002 today has a capacity to produce 28.5 million metric tons, and that for the first time ever in the history of Nigeria, Nigeria exported cement out of Nigeria in 2013. I'm also delighted to say that the expectation is that by the end of this year, we should have capacity of about 39 million metric tons, and we should have one of, if not the largest, cement plantation in the world. That is the progress we have made in cement. That is why what we want to replicate in all these other 10 sectors or 15 sectors we have identified. Where we can be, we should, by right, become number one easily in Africa and top 10 globally. Nigeria foremost industrialist Alhaji Aliko Dangote shared his thought on the NIRP. The neo industrial policy is something that I believe can easily double the investment of Nigeria in the next, uh, you know, two, three years, you know, because there are a lot of good things that are actually coming out, out of it. And I am sure any serious investor will definitely wake up and uh, rush to investing into Nigeria. Ten years ago, the total production of cement in Nigeria was 
1.8 million tons, less than even 2 million tons. Uh, as at last year, we closed last year at about uh, 28 million tons. Going forward in the next four months, by June, uh, we'll, be at, we'll add another 9 million tons. So we'll be at about 37 million tons, which means you can see the difference between 1.8 million tons and 37 million tons, all in less than 11 years. Uh, we actually achieved that because uh, the, you know, the government had actually been consistent in terms of the policy. The policy was followed to the latter. Uh, we've had a bit of hiccup here and there, but you know, it has actually run extremely well. So I believe this is one of the best policies uh, ever. It made us to now go all out and invest, as at last year, over $8 billion dollars. And today, as I speak to you, by the next six months, so to speak, when we stabilize, Nigeria will be able to export easily not less than five to seven million tons of cement. And that's quite a lot of money, you know, and uh, we've done extremely well. I mean, it's the best, actually, performing industry today in, in the country. One of the immediate benefits of NIRP is a recent investment by General Electric into the Nigerian power sector. Uh, Nigeria has great promise uh, and it's really based on very strong natural resources, uh, terrific people, and I would say an increasing focus from both the government and the entrepreneurial class towards industrialization. So we've always viewed that Nigeria has a great entrepreneurial class and when those things come together, resources and industrialization, great things happen. General Electric Global Chairman highlighted reasons for his company's partnership with the Dangote Group. One of the things that can help countries grow is the industrialization and entrepreneurship of small business. So we see that around the world that that's typically a gap. Uh, a company like GE, for every job we create in Nigeria, there should be eight in the supply chain. So if we hire more than 300 people at Calabar, there should be more than 2,000 people in the supply chain. And in order to do that, that requires a great SME entrepreneurial class. And so big companies like Dangote and GE, we know how to do training. We have uh, supplies we buy for our own businesses. Uh, we know how to invest in startup companies. And I think when you get this powerful SME base, that's when countries really take off. That's been the secret for global development, and that's why I think it's so critical for us to be a part of that. Actually, we want to do like training, to train, uh, you know, uh, companies, I mean, individuals, companies, and make sure that they have what it takes to, uh, you know, to run their business. Uh, areas of where do we, or how do we help them to assist in getting them consistent power so they don't need to invest in power, which means, we can have like an economic zone, a small one, where SMEs will key in and have a very, very productive business. Jeff also commended the company's partnership with the Bank of Industry. The country is in the process of industrializing, which is quite exciting. Uh, GE, from a technical standpoint, is a big infrastructure company. And we see uh, incredible opportunities for GE across a number of sectors and uh, when I was here last year, we committed to invest a billion dollars. We think as part of that investment, we'll create more than 2,000 jobs. This includes manufacturing, service, engineering, a number of activities. So we're quite confident to move forward in terms of uh, GE's investments in the country. Uh, there's two bottlenecks that the MD and I discussed this afternoon that remain where we think in partnership we can be helpful. Uh, the first one is financing. Uh, we, we have to find ways to be more uh, creative, to find ways to be more economical, and by taking uh, funds from uh, GE, adding to it third-party funds, adding to it things like XM and USAID, adding to it uh, uh, BOI, you get real capability to uh, produce credit for more people, which will be uh, attractive to the region. So we've committed to take and allocate capital to be a part of that and work in partnership across several sectors with uh, the MD. 
Uh, the second piece is the development of small and medium uh, sized enterprises, the entrepreneurial base inside, uh, inside the country. And not only do they need financing, but also training and education and development. And we believe that this development of SMEs is incredibly important again for the development. And so our relationship and our partnership will allow us to find new ways to finance, but more importantly, allow us outreach to uh, the entrepreneurial class in Nigeria, which I know that they exist, and I know they're there. And uh, we can help them as by being their customer and partner. And I think if you get infrastructure like electricity, and then you add to that financing, and you add to that entrepreneurs, that's how you sustain growth over long periods of time. And that's what we're really working on today. Thank you. Great, thank, thank you. you. So thank you very much. Great. I've listened to you, the passion that you have and what has made GE different. Uh, GE has demonstrated beyond reasonable doubt why it has earned its place in history. Uh, we've had a conversation this afternoon in my office, and you have come up, and you, you and your team have been discussing creative ways of ensuring that the bank of industry, and indeed the whole nation, benefits from the advantage, the technology, the expertise, the efficiency that is GE. And I want to share it with all of you here, that Bank of Industry indeed is very proud to have a partnership with you. Uh, we would like a situation where um, we will not be another GE, but we want to be close. Ah, good. Thank you very much. Great. Yeah, that's it. Good. The plan is to look at some vertical industries that we have in common, places like power or healthcare, to take GE funds, match them with BOI funds, and be able to multiply those by getting other third-party investors, and then work to get those funds distributed in an economical way to SMEs and to people trying to build, uh, build business. Uh, one of the barriers, not just in Nigeria, but th across Africa is financing. It remains one of the great bottlenecks of infrastructure development. And you need new catalysts in order to make that uh, take place. And that's one of the things that the BOI can help with. Look, I think the next five years could be an exciting, incredibly exciting time for Nigeria in terms of uh, uh, infrastructure development. I, I'm extremely confident that GE is going to be successful in the next five years. True success will be if we can drag and if we can bring hundreds of small companies along with us. And I think if we can do our part, and if we can drag companies with us as we do that, in, in terms of our ability to help them and buy from them and help finance them, then the next five years will be incredibly exciting, not only for GE, but also for the country. Well, you've heard it from the industrialists themselves, how the Nigerian Industrial Revolution Plan, NIRP, has been impacting positively on various aspects of their businesses. You also heard the global chairman of General Electric, who praised the federal government on the new plans, which has continued to generate positive responses from within and outside the country. We at the Bank of Industry will continue to play our part in supporting entrepreneurs with good business ideas that can be turned into employment generation and wealth creation ventures. BOI is resolute in providing the required development financing and business support services to ensure the success of Nigeria's Industrial Revolution Plan. It's on this note that we'll conclude this week's edition of Wealth Creation Through Industrialization. I am Hadiza Olao Shibika. Have an enterprising week. <music>